Ganesh, welcome back to my channel, uh, Interview Guidance. Uh, today I am going to discuss about uh, basic interview questions concepts like from the OOPS Java level. Uh, like first now, now top 30 core Java interview questions. Now I am going to deal with the top 30 core Java interview questions which are uh, mostly covered in lot of interviews from only that uh, Java level, Java perspective, JDOC perspective. Today I am going to cover all these 30 Java interview questions just like the following only uh, giving the overview of the questions level not no, no answers for the interview whatever the questions given only questions I am giving overview of the questions top 30 core Java interview questions so basically these are all 30 questions related to the OOPS principles object oriented uh, concepts from the J2SC level so now I am going to start with all uh, core Java interview questions here is my first slide here I am going to show all the OOPS concepts level uh, up, uh, out of 30 uh, first slide I am going to show 6 Java interview questions and the first one is can we overload main method this is a common question for a lot of Java interview questions or freshers or experience level we can, uh, we can face this kind of question can we overload a main method uh, today I am going to cover only the questions level I am not giving any answers on these questions just giving the overview of the questions how, how the interviewers can ask the questions in the Java interview, Java interviews level so just I am giving the uh, 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 top questions only uh, next level, uh, can we create a program without a main method? This is the second one of the top questions asked by a lot of interviews. And what is covariant return type in Java? So there is a return types we have, we can see a lot of return types. Like uh, mainly it is uh, available in uh, method overloading and overriding concept. You can see this kind of return type. You can just check that method overriding concept. You can understand what is this one. And I am just giving the question on this. What is covariant return type? And what are the six ways to use this keyword? This is also one of the top question asked in a lot of interviews and why multiple inheritance is not supported in Java this is the basic and common interview questions in any Java interviews why multiple inheritance is not supported in Java along with we have one more question like can we override the static method and this is also one of the common question in the Java interview questions and go to the next slide and uh, this is the seventh one top out of 30 top seven questions what are the three uses of super keyword the basic level loops principle we have super this keyword and what is the actual three uses of the super keyword and why we use instance initializer block this is one of the question and also we can see what is the usage of blank final variable we can see like normal final variable uh, we can say like static and normal final variable but is the kind of like just like interviewer making like blank final variable you can just see read the question properly and blank final variable and we'll go for one more interview question what is marker or tagged interface like in java we have interfaces like without empty interfaces like serializable and clonable these are the interfaces and what are those interfaces they're asking and we can see in the jws like one more question like what is runtime polymorphism or dynamic method dispatch both are concept dealing the same concept runtime polymorphism or dynamic method dispatch if you see that we know the OOPS principles you can answer this question easily and we can go with uh, another question what is the difference between static and dynamic binding there is a two ways of uh, data binding is there in java in the OOPS concepts you can see data binding is like two ways static and data dynamic data binding you go then move on to the next slide the top 13 question 13th vision like same again it's like concept of from the OOPS principles only how down casting is possible in Java? Like we have different ways of uh, uh, casting operations in Java. It is one of the down casting operations is there. We can just check it and down casting is possible in Java. And what is the purpose of private constructor? Like we have in Java mostly all our normal constructor when we create a, uh, any Java class to private any Java class and we want to instance the Java class, we need a constructor. That is like normal public constructor. But what is the purpose of creating a private constructor? You can see this concept mainly in the singleton design pattern. There in the Java we have it called singleton design pattern. There we can see this private constructor usage. And what is the object cloning? In Java in the oops, like basic object oriented program, you can see the concept called cloning. Like uh, earlier I talked about clonable interface. There is a concept called cloning operation. Give the clone method. There is a concept of cloning. We can just check that what is uh, object cloning. What is uh, how many is we can do this object cloning kind of thing operations. And what are the basic concepts of OOPS language? Like basic principles we can talk about. Like uh, different concepts OOPS principles we have inheritance, polymorphism, abstract class, interface, class, object. These kind of OOPS principles are there. And what are the basic though we can just explain about those things in an interview ask. And next we'll move on to the is it compulsory for abstract class to have abstract method? These are one of the common questions. So we, we can see like abstract classes and interfaces. What is the difference between abstract and interfaces? That time we can see more about read about abstract classes. Then you can answer this question easily. 
and we can go over the one of the uh, big and uh, uh, like many common interview question important interview question in java string string buffer and string builders we can see not only string lot of the string itself the interview might dig into lot on lot you can so again the next slides i can show what are the string concepts they might ask so this is one of the common questions string string buffer and string builder and we can move on to the uh, like earlier i have talked about uh, string so you can see why string is immutable in java this is one of the common question in java and java hoops principles and how to create a beautiful class in java and what is the like i can say already string is by default java is provided as immutable class if i want to class i have a hello world or hello class i how can i make my class as immutable that by creating that kind of questions they may ask how to create immutable class in java and how like within my java class i have a date variable how can i make the date variable as immutable by default it will not be immutable with the java class so you need to make some specialization cloning operations to do this uh, date variable is immutable so this is one of the common feature in java to make a date class as immutable thing and this is a common question you can see and you can, there is a one more question difference between string string buffer and string builder already we discussed earlier uh, but here is there is a concept of string buffer they, they might ask like differentiate in between this string buffer and string builder also but why is string buffer is thread shape why builder is not thread shape there is a common question within, within this they might begin to learn based on your answers they will dig in more on string string buffer and string builder level and what are the object class methods there is a like java we have 9 to 10 9 class 9 object class methods like equals hash code clone different kind of string two string kind methods these are the basic java class object java object class super class methods are there so we can answer those by seeing this object class methods java level and i already had already discussed making a private constructor class as a final different kind of things we can make one um, class as a singleton so this is the one of the design pattern singleton design pattern so uh, common is this is a very important and common interview questions wherever we go in the interview level as far as java uh, experience or uh, like lesser experience or higher experience they might ask this kind of design patterns one of the common question is singleton design pattern so now i move on to that last slide uh, here i am uh, <coughs> like like uh, we have the discussed 25 to that last uh, six uh, interview questions like what is object locking mechanism in java you can see java there is a uh, every object have a lock so there is an object locking mechanism provided by java so like class level and object level locking mechanism you can just read about that object locking mechanism it will be more easy uh, <coughs> interesting concept in if you go to the multi-threading and all volatile feature and all so this might be more useful and interesting concept in the multi-threading environment so java is by default is providing um, <coughs> is a lock for each object in the world, whatever the classes we created so just read about this question is very co important common question also in the multi-threading environment more useful and when you go with the how to achieve memory management in java this is also one basic and common interview question memory management how to make a memory is always available like heap memory when you create every class instance that the object instance will be stored in the heap memory so we need to uh, whenever we create instance that will be stored in the heap memory that means the space is available always then only we we can't uh, see any kind of out of memory kind of errors in jvm uh, jvm level so that kind of memory management required by jvm that will be achieved through some of the garbage collector concept so you can read about how memory management happens through garbage collector finalized method usage how this is different kind of algorithms used by the garbage collector to achieve this uh, concept there is a algorithm called uh, mark and sweep algorithm that will be handled by the garbage collector to make this happens to get the actual uh, active objects always uh, run and uh, uh, inactive objects make to be sweep out from the heap memory this kind of algorithm mark there is a concept called mark sweep algorithm it's mark sweep algorithm and what is the this is within the same concept we have a system.gc and runtime.gc how uh, there is a two two types of methods we have system level system class level we have garbage collector and runtime class level we have a garbage collector so how these two will be differentiated between this how these are differentiated how these are participated in the memory management and also there is a concept called uh, um, final finally and finalize so finalize again is a memory management process kind of a method and final finally might be the different variables like keywords here final keyword and finally is like within the exception handling mechanism where you would go to the exception handling you can see finally block how it will be useful and at the last question is like basic and uh, common interview question jvm architecture this is uh, question is like a simple one but if you dig into the question like whatever the jvm architecture we can see a lot of concepts like class loaders uh, <coughs> memory management heap area my stack area method area how different uh, how memory management segregation happens within my jvm architecture everything will be decided by the jvm here within this architecture only 
So this is like looks simple, but uh, for answering this JVM architecture, you need to be uh, thoroughly understanding of the JVM architecture completely. Then only you can crack this kind of uh, interview question. So uh, hope you guys understand what I'm going to um, explain here. Just I'm giving the overview of what kind of questions comes through. Only the OOPs core Java interview questions. These are I just covered in this part. I covered only the OOPs principles, object-oriented principles concepts. Uh, like here only uh, out of all these 30 questions based on the OOPs principles only. In my next video, this continuation video, I will explain remaining core Java interview questions like exception handling, multi-threading, and collection framework. There is might be 30, 40, um, might be there more interview questions are there. I am going to explain in my continuation videos. Keep watching to my video and getting crack into the interviews on easy way. Thanks for watching. Thanks again. This is your Mahesh. Please subscribe to my channel, Interview Guidance. Thanks.